Hey, hey, I think we are live. I'm just going to uh, double check here and make sure that I have all my ducks in a row. Check my phone, make sure that we're live. <clears throat> How's everybody doing tonight? Is it spinning? Yes, we are. Wonderful. Yeah, I think we are live. I'm just going to. Uh, so I've got to check here. Mute my sound here sure just on my I microphone my just because I forgot to do that. Phone, and it's. Make sure that we're live. There we go. Okay. I think we're good now. So. So I'm Laura Baker with Everyday Horsemanship, and I'm here because I help horse owners and trainers get a uh, better relationship with their horses, you know, turning their horses from resistant to willing partners through Liberty Training. So we're going to do a few slides here, and then we're going to be diving right into the power behind the bridge cue, and um, which is really what we're going to be talking about tonight uh, or today. If that's if you're here earlier time zone, it's five o'clock uh, Central Standard Time here in Wisconsin. Uh, but for some of you folks, it might be three o'clock in the afternoon. But uh, I'm really going to be walking you through how I use bridge cues to, uh, you know, really get horses working with me during our training sessions. But I'm first going to tell you a little bit about me. And as some of you who've been following me for uh, a long time, you might have attended a few of my other live streams that I've held. And some of you, this might be your first live stream. But so why don't we uh, do this right in the comments first if this is your first live stream with me uh if you've done others before write the word others if you've done some others and i'm just going to take a look at that uh turn my volume down on my phone as i check and see what the comments are because i won't be able to see the comments otherwise <clears throat> so anybody who's joining us uh if you could write that otherwise uh if you're watching this later from the replay uh, go ahead and go into the comments and let me know if this is your first live stream or if you've seen others. So uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me and, uh, and a little bit with my background. So I started focusing on liberty training about four to five years ago. And in that time, I've not only started a liberty team of three horses, but in total, I have seven horses. Well, I actually have 12 horses, but uh, there's quite a few of those horses that are retired horses and, and, you know, don't do really a, a whole lot besides, uh, sit in the pasture and look pretty, but I personally have, uh, seven horses. Well, let me correct it again. Six horses and one mini named Jake, all doing Liberty. So seven of those, uh, horses doing Liberty. And I've helped dozens of horse owners and trainers achieve Liberty with their own horses. I compete with the International Liberty Horse Association. I'm a carded judge for the ILHA, uh, for the organization. I perform Liberty freestyles in front of large audiences. And best of all, uh, my horses come to me when I call. And that's really important, right? They love being with me and spending time with me. So my first year or so of Liberty, I struggled a lot, uh, just like you maybe have struggled. I didn't know where to start. And uh, quite honestly, I skipped some steps that I didn't really know about. I, I, I didn't really know. We don't know what we don't know. And these were vital steps that made a huge difference uh, once we got into large arenas. And, and while I may have been doing, getting some liberty, achieving some liberty, because it came from a training background anyway, and uh, I, I still struggled on the liberty side because I skipped some steps. So then over time, I started to really figure some things out. And, uh, you know, once I filled in the, the, the pieces of what I was missing, uh, my horses and I just excelled in our liberty very, very quickly. And it made it so much easier to teach uh, subsequent horses here. So, you know, <clears throat> um, 
some of you on the line, the reason you might be struggling right now is, uh, you know, with your horses, because there's no clarity uh, in your communication. And some of you, that's why you don't have a, a good relationship with your horse and or that's why your horse seems focused elsewhere on other things. You know, maybe when you're together, your horse is looking off in the distance all the time and not really paying attention to you or your cues. Uh, maybe you're already trying to do liberty and your horse is leaving you. And that's really uh, just because it's a clear indication, really, that you just don't have clarity. You don't have clear communication. And we'll be talking a little bit about that as we go on uh, in this live stream tonight. So how many of you on the line, let me know, are you having trouble with your communication, such as what to say and how to say it with your horse? Or is it motivation? And, and I'm referring to motivation for the horse, not the human, right? Um, but I suppose it could be a uh, motivation for you too. Uh, that could be, but let's uh, refer to the horse here. And, and you can write down, so if you can go into the comments and write down, type, uh, you know, both if it's both, if it's motivation, type motivation in the comments, if it's communication, uh, again, which is what to say to your horse and how to say it, then write communication. So whose communication and whose motivation? And I'm just going to check the comments here and see if we've got anybody writing it down and if this is the, the replay. Okay, so Gracie says both. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, and that's not uncommon. They're, they're kind of intertwined with each other. Uh, you know, when we have, you know, motivation and communication, if we don't have the right motivation, then we don't have the right communication. Oftentimes, Carrie says communication. Uh, Rose says all of the above, all of the above, struggling through that, right? Um, so let's see, anybody else? Okay. So, you know, I'll be able to help you with a little bit of that um, here. And, um, you know, today's topic on Bridge Cues does focus on motivation, uh, but it also crosses over into your communication as well. So, I, you know, I'm probably one of the fastest growing Liberty coaches in the sport of Liberty uh, for horse owners and trainers who want better relationships with their horses and, and to gain willing partners with that relationship. And my clients have improved their relationships with their horses. Uh, I even uh, have uh, clients whose dream was to compete with the International Liberty Horse Association and are now uh, finally doing so. So it, you know, it hasn't been just me succeeding at Liberty with my horses over the past uh, four to five years of Liberty. Uh, it's been all of the clients that I have helped to make successful and, and I'm, I'm proud to watch them to, you know, as they achieve their goals and, and milestones. So I've had a lot of client success and, and I'm one of the first coaches to gear my program to virtual clients where they can learn directly from me in uh, live virtual sessions. And they've been able to feel confident in working with their horse, knowing that they're not alone and that I'm right there with them. So, I, you know, let me know if uh, down in the comments, if you're watching this uh, live or watching the replay right now. So um, in, in a moment here, we're going to get started and talk a little bit more about bridge cues, but uh, we're going to take that deeper dive, but just wanted to share this slide here with you. And this was uh, very early uh, on equine affair a few years back and uh, working my Liberty team and, and they were not as connected as they are today. Um, the communication certainly needed a lot of a lot more help and, and we just uh, we had some things that we were missing and, and it really made a big difference. So uh, but so in this training, we're going to uh, take that deeper dive, like I said, into bridge cues and I'm going to bring it all together for you in, in this comprehensive session that uh, will help you gain remarkable results in your relationship with your horse, right? So I'm going to tell you what a bridge cue is and hopefully you'll figure it out, but I'm gonna tell you what it isn't. So 
Uh, who's ready to dive in? I'm going to take a quick drink of water and let's see if you guys are ready to drop, dive in. Let me know if you're ready in the comments, please. <clears throat> All right, go into the next thing. I have a little gnat here, sorry. <laughs> as, as soon as I took a drink of water, it wanted to uh, come in flying into my face. So uh, what is a bridge? And a bridge really connects two behaviors. So it's the, the behavior your horse gives you and the consequence of that behavior. So consequence means neither good or bad, it's just a result of that behavior. So um, it, it either motivates the horse to give a desired behavior or it motivates the horse to not give an, uh, um, an undesired behavior. But it can also motivate a horse, uh, a consequence. If it's inadvertent consequence, it can actually motivate a horse to give a behavior that uh, is undesirable for the human, right? We don't want to if they're getting some sort of um, reinforcing consequence for it. So. Uh, so those are some things that we always have to think about. So, uh, so let's just take a step back for a minute and look closer at the problems before we get in too deep about uh, the, the bridge. Okay. And, and let's look at the problems that we might see and, and um, with our horses, right? When we don't have that communication, we don't have that connection. We don't, uh, we aren't using the proper motivation. Uh, so let's talk about inconsistent behavior, right? And this could be delayed responses, uh, repeated mistakes, resistance, which can include rearing, pulling back on the lead rope, running off, kicking back, all of that. I mean, there's a, a disinterest, maybe a loss of your horse's focus or um, <clears throat> there are lots of things, right? When we see that inconsistent behavior or we're asking a horse to give us a specific uh, behavior and they're giving us something else. So, uh, you're, you know, maybe your horse is focusing on everything, but you, uh, maybe your horse is walking out of an exercise or backing away from an exercise, uh, anticipating anticipation. Horses are great anticipators, which makes them good learners too, but they're, uh, good anticipators, uh, running off at Liberty, Okay, reactive or nervous horses. So all of these. And as a result, your horse is making a uh, slow progress and your, your training sessions are drawn out as your horse takes, you know, that much longer to grasp each, each exercise. So um, how many of you just give me a, an indicator if you see any of those things that I uh, just mentioned at all, put that into type that into the comments at all, any of those uh, what have you seen? Just uh, give me give me a little insight. Uh, if you're struggling, those of you who said you were struggling, what what are you seeing um, in there? And I'm just going to take a second and take a look. <clears throat> you know, um, you might see if you have uh, inconsistent behavior, you might even see greater resistance. And, uh, you know, because your horse is, your your horse's anxiety uh, might come into play even, and it's leading to more resistance, right? So Carrie says a lock of loss of focus, um, still not as bad as it used to be, uh, cause Carrie is one of my clients. So, so we've been working through that, but, uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, <clears throat> so when you see more resistance, okay. Grace says inconsistency. Yeah. Uh, Rose says walking forward. Yeah. Rose is another one of my clients and, and, uh, we just did a feedback video today. Right. And, uh, I, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at that, but that was, uh, one of the things I saw in that. So, uh, you know, anytime that we see those, uh, that kind of resistance or, um, anything, it really slows down our training because, uh, you know, your horse now has new behaviors as they're giving you different responses. They, they have new behaviors that must be unlearned before the new, more uh, positive behaviors can be taught. So, and of course, uh, without motivation, your horse uh, will lack some enthusiasm. So, and then you both become frustrated because your horse isn't learning as quickly as you want. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Rose says, I did. I became frustrated. Yep. 
And, and we're going to talk about that, uh, you know, in that, in our group session a little bit more Rose. So, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow's group session for my clients, but maybe, uh, let's, let's look at it this way. So maybe time is limited for you. Many of you maybe work a full-time job and you don't have a lot of time to always work with your horse. So, uh, at the end of the day, you know, there's really three things that you need, uh, to, and so I, I should probably, um, fast forward. I, I kind of slowed this down here a, a little bit. So, uh, slow progress. <laughs> I should, forgot about my slides here. <clears throat> the slow progress. We talked about that and frustration leads to frustration, right? So, <clears throat> uh, at the, you know, at the end of the day, as I was saying is, there's three things that you really need uh, if you want to build a relationship with your horse and ultimately achieve liberty. Uh, you know, and that's where your horse wants to be with you fully. Even if you ask for impulsion, uh, you ask, you can drive them away and then you can still draw them. So uh, <clears throat> the, these are, you know, uh, non-negotiable, right? Uh, all three of these are vital in order to get liberty. Now there's other things that are just as important, but they kind of fall in, uh, in these other areas, but consistent and reliable communication. <clears throat> there's multiple ways, uh, that you can communicate with your horse, uh, you know, from using your own body language to your, to your visual cues, verbal cues, uh, number two, motivation. You need a way to motivate your horse. And, you know, just as you won't work for an employer for free, your horse also wants there to be something in it for him, right? Uh, we shouldn't expect our horses to work without some sort of motivation. It's not bribing just as it's not bribing for you to work for your employer if you work for someone. Uh so how you motivate and the timing of your motivation is just as important, right? And lastly, you need to build a genuine connection with your horse. The, the, you know, the way a horse wants to connect, not always the way we as humans think that we want to connect um, because they are an animal and they are going to connect in a very different way. So by understanding each of these three pillars, you will build a positive relationship with your horse. <clears throat> so today we are talking about motivation and the use of bridge cues, right? Uh, and that falls under motivation. So here's how I leverage bridge cues. Number one, I mark the exact point and time the horse gives me the desired or undesired behavior. Very important. Number two, I then follow that bridge with a desirable or an undesirable consequence. Remember I mentioned earlier, consequences are neither good or bad per se. Uh, they're desirable or undesirable consequence. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Uh, of what that means and, and what a desirable consequence or what an undesirable consequence is. But uh, marking the exact moment of desired or undesired behavior with a bridge cue, uh, it, it, it's really crucial because it provides immediate and clear feedback to your horse, helping your horse uh, to understand precisely what the action is uh, being rewarded or discouraged. So th that is really, really important. And, and I'm just going to say that again in a different way. It's marking the exact moment that the horse gave a specific behavior. And if you want to, if it's a desired behavior, you are marking the moment that you, that the horse gave you that desired behavior. Uh, if it's an undesired behavior, you will also mark the moment. So some of you are familiar with clicker training. Uh, this goes beyond just using a clicker. Uh, so it's not just clicker. This is clicker training on steroids. 
but um, let me put it that way. It's on steroids. That means we are using multiple bridge cues uh, and uh, using them in different ways. So it's really on steroids. We're going to talk about that a little bit more, but uh, the, the precision that we have uh, in this way, uh, using bridge cues in this way, it really enhances the learning and it reinforces the connection between the horse's behavior and the outcome, which is far more impactful than uh, any motivator alone could be, right? So the bridge cue itself becomes uh, almost a primary motivator, okay? Uh, and primary motivators, not to get too sciencey on you, primary motivators are generally, uh, or gen gen generally, they are something that are natural to a horse. So, uh, you know, sex drives and food and water, those are primary motivators, right? So, because we, they need those things to, to, to somewhat survive or those are natural to the horse uh, as they're born. But uh, so by consistently using the bridge cues, you establish a, a reliable communication system that builds trust and clarity and making training really that much more effective. Uh, it, you know, it fosters a stronger bond with your horse overall. So for example, uh, let's just say your horse finally has a breakthrough in something you've been teaching him, right? Uh, and you're pretty excited about it. And uh, maybe it's the lay down, Spanish walk, maybe your horse is running up to you. Maybe you just get your first Liberty circle. You know, if you don't mark the apex of the exact moment your horse gave you whatever it was you were asking for, your horse is going to be confused because they won't know why you're rewarding them. OK, uh, maybe you're digging into your pocket, you know, you've, you've stopped the, the exercise and you're digging into your pop pocket and getting out, you know, a treat or or, you know, or something. Um, what, whatever it is, whatever you do to reward your horse will most likely be too long after your horse gave you the, the behavior that it gave you. And it's going to be a lot harder for them to know exactly what it is that they did correctly. So, uh, you know, so it, a, a bridge cue bridges the moment that the horse gave you the behavior with the moment that they delivered uh, you know, or with the moment that you deliver the consequence of that behavior, whether it's a desirable consequence or an undesirable consequence, right? Uh, and again, we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but you are bridging that, that moment, that exact moment. So let me know in the comments if this is making sense to you at all, okay? Um, you, you know, give me a thumbs up if you're following this right now. Is this making sense to you? Is there, you know, are you getting some value from this? That, that would be great to know. So, um, so, you know, so when your horse knows when it, when it did or what it did was either the right behavior or the wrong behavior, you stand that much greater chance of your horse learning faster. So Carrie says, yep, very much so. Good. I'm glad you're getting some value out of this because this is some very important stuff. And this is one of the things that I see most often in the people that I work with, that uh, it, it is um, the inconsistent use of bridge cues, the inconsistent use of bridge cues, because that is going to help your horse learn that much faster. So, so let's dive in a little deeper with uh, bridge cue examples, the different bridge cues we use for desirable behaviors and their motivators, okay? Uh, so I have identified uh, really four bridge cues that I use on a regular basis and uh, for desirable behaviors with my horse, right? Uh, so the, and here's the motivators that I use, and, and it goes like this. The desirable behaviors that I see, there's a terminal bridge cue, there's a keep going stimulus, there's an intermittent bridge cue, and then there's the jackpot reward. Now, how I use them, again, I use it a little differently than the clicker. 
Uh, the clicker does not allow you to use different intonations. It doesn't allow you to use anything different than the click, click. That's it. So in general, most people who use a clicker, especially with a dog, they are using a clicker uh, as a terminal bridge cue. But that means there's no variation that you can give from that particular uh, bridge cue. So I instead will use a verbal cue and I prefer, and I will never use a verbal cue that I am going to use at any other time, right? That is so important. Any other time, don't ever use it any other time. I don't care if you use a different language, uh, start to speak French, German, Italian, whatever, if it's not your native language and, <clears throat> and use it. But I use the word good just like that. Nice and excited and uh, with a little bit of energy. And my horse will understand what that means. That means the exercise is over with. And as soon as I get stop that, they stop the exercise and they get their reward. Okay. Motivators in general, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about those as we go, but I am releasing the pressure that is a motivator. And I am delivering some sort of positive reinforcer, which is uh, maybe I'm rubbing them or maybe I'm giving them a treat. Okay. So when, when we use the terminal bridge cue, that means the exercise ends. The keep going stimulus is a very, very important one. And it's a, it's one that I used, for example, when I taught Dalton to lay down and he needed some, a, a little encouragement that he was getting closer and closer to laying down. I always knew he was going to be difficult to lay down. And when I was teaching him, he already knows what the word good is, but just a little variation of that word told him Yes, you are on the right track. You're not quite there yet. You are on the right track. Keep going. And I do that as good, 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 just like that. He knows the word good. But he also knows if I do it that way, he's not quite there to keep going. My horses know to keep going. And that is not something you necessarily need to use every day. It's those very difficult maneuvers that you really need to give some additional motivation to keep them going and let them know that they're on the right track, right? And then once they get where they need to go, such as when Dalton laid down, then I'm gonna give my terminal bridge cue, good. And he knows, and he would get right back up. So, because he laid down and that was it. Now, if it, when it was the first time he laid down, I'm just gonna jump ahead to the jackpot reward. <clears throat> the very first time, uh, we got that lay down because it had been so difficult. I rewarded him with the jackpot reward. And what does that mean? That was good, good boy, or, you know, just good. Just having it. So when you work multiple horses and you work mares and geldings together, you have to be very careful about using good boy, good girl, because you mix them. And then who are you saying good to? Um, <clears throat> you might use their names, but sometimes it's just easier just to go good, good boy. So it's a little more drawn out. It's not like the good, see how I can change that one word that they already know they're conditioned science, science conditions using this, uh, this is classical conditioning. They know, uh, scientifically, they know what that word means because they've been conditioned to know it's a very positive and rewarding word. But as you can see, it's clicker training on steroids because it allows you to have more communication and feedback with your horse on a regular basis. basis. And I really like giving my horses feedback. So how they receive that jackpot reward is they're probably going to get multiple treats a uh, handful of grain, whatever it is, and lots of rubs and, and really making that the best thing. We might even walk around for a little bit. Uh, that's how that is used. Now, <clears throat> the intermediate uh, bridge cue. 
So the intermediate bridge queue is uh, one of those uh, bridge queues that we will use in the middle of uh, when they're doing something good, right? So uh, horses are, are out there on a, a Liberty Circle and they are, you know, this is the first time they've, they've done, uh, as a team, done a Liberty Circle and you want to give them an indicator or some feedback to say, yes, you are doing good. The exercise isn't over. Yes, you've done what you need to do, but I want you just to keep going for now. Uh, a little bit different than the keep going stimulus. This is just an intermediate bridge cue saying, yes, at some point in the future, in the near future, you will be getting a reinforcer, okay, uh, which is the desirable consequence, a reinforcer, a positive reinforcer, okay? And so uh, I will use the word good, good. And so I change it just a little bit differently, right? Uh, so that's how I use desirable behaviors and their motivators. So undesirable behaviors and their motivators. Again, this is very different than clicker because clicker we've associated that uh, if we were using a clicker, which when I work horses, I, I don't have another hand, especially when I'm working multiple horses. But if I work uh, horses uh, and I'm using a clicker, I've only associated or conditioned that uh, particular uh, noise or sound to mean something uh, positively reinforcing. Uh, and we are going to talk a little bit about that. But when there's undesired behaviors, I want to give my horse constant feedback. Again, constant feedback is very, very, very important because it tells my horse whether they're on the right track or they're not. So I have three primary uh, reinf or, uh, well, they're a reinforcer of, of sorts. It's a different type of reinforcer, but that, it, and it's a motivator for them to not give me the desired behavior, right? Uh, so I, instead of giving them, rewarding them with release of pressure and positive reinforcement, I might, uh, give a correction. And again, we're going to talk about this more in the, uh, the next couple of slides here, but I will, make sure that they know that that is not the correct behavior. So uh, the first and, and foremost one that I use a lot of is the word no. We've all done that. No, it's simple. No. If your horse tries to bite you, no. <laughs> you know. Uh, so uh, where it comes into play more often for me right now with my Liberty team is when a horse tries to bite another horse and uh, in the team, and we're working on team behaviors. And that, that means, number one, they're not focused on me. They're not, you know, giving me the attention that I'm requesting at that time. So if Mott tries to bite at Magica or Magica tries to bite at Dalton, it's by simply saying, no, they know what that means, okay? If they don't stop, then we're going to have to go to a correction, maybe backing them up, putting their feet to work, something like that, that says that is the wrong answer. You don't get to do that. You don't get to kick at your team member. You have 22, 23 hours a day out in the pasture. I don't care what you do when you're out in the pasture, but when you are here in school with me, uh, you know, we have to have respectful behaviors and we're going to be respectful to all and respectful to uh, the, the, the horses that you're working with as a team. So we're really gonna act like a team at that point. Then I have one that's a try again. And this one I use quite frequently and it's ah, 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 just like that. And in general, what that means is the horse either knows and should know a little bit differently than what then what, then the answer that they're giving me. So I'm asking them to do something. And, and uh, here's an example. So uh, Matanui, my Mustang, I'm asking her to do a Liberty circle. And just recently I taught her to give me a send away circle to the outside. And <clears throat> we're, we're doing a Liberty circle and she decides all on her own to go and give me a circle on the outside. Now that would be great if that was what I wanted, but that's not what I wanted. I didn't cue for that. 
And there's a cue for everything. I want there to be a cue for everything. So I'm going to say, ah, uh, 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 that's the incorrect behavior. And what that means is, is associated with the fact that you're not getting a, a positive reinforcer. We're not going to stop the exercise. You're not getting rewarded. You're not giving it, getting a treat. And if you keep doing it, um, you, you know, there, there are other things that we may do, uh, in those situations that will, uh, maybe I might have to, you know, drive to closer towards her hindquarters and, and, uh, or maybe, you know, ask her to pick up speed and bend around me a little bit more, or, or uh, maybe I'll back up and, and make her run to me a little bit more and just keep her draw to me versus drawing away and circling around away. And so I will use that to show her what the correct answer is. And, and that usually helps. So that ah, ah, ah really helps a lot. The pay attention to me, this, this is one that uh, I'm really good at whistling and other people are not. So you may have to come up with something else that is going to work for you. But mine is just like that. So I will even do a variation, a slight variation of that, of, you know, so I will give them a little whistle to warn them that they need to pay attention to me, that, that they are not bending into me. They're not looking at me. I can see, I usually save this for the moment where I think my horse could leave me if they don't bend around me, if they're not connected to me, they're looking at something else. And usually what follows this particular bridge cue, the consequence that would follow is I'm going to ask for a pivot of the hindquarters to push the hindquarters away and draw the eye. And, and that's usually what happens. So I'm going to give them a whistle and get them back. Now I do know some Liberty trainers uh, when their horses run off on them, that they might use the long lash on their, their stick and, and crack it. And uh, that is also used as a sort of bridge cue to uh, tell the horse that there is a, a consequence to that behavior. If you don't come back, that we're going to drive your feet out. So uh, get you, get you going. So I don't do very good. I whistle really good. I don't do very good at cracking my, my, my whip very well. Uh, probably could do better at that, but uh, usually I try to prevent them from leaving me versus once they leave me to be more on the reactive side, but sometimes uh, that, you know, that's all you can do. So typically if they leave me, I'll just uh, do my recall and say here and try to get them back. But, uh, you know, that pay attention to me, that works so well. Uh, recently I took Matanui to her first show down in Missouri and uh, she did place first in a uh, compulsory pattern, which was really exciting because it was the first time she'd ever been off my property. There were some other patterns we did. And uh, in one of those patterns, there was a situation where she saw uh, another one of our Mustangs there that my husband was showing. And she is particularly close to that Mustang, Tafiti. And she saw Tafiti and she she wanted to get to Tafiti, but she never left me, but you could see she was thinking about it. She couldn't concentrate. She couldn't uh, pay attention to me. She, and this was her last class on the, the one particular day. Uh, but I just kept giving her consistent feedback and gaining her attention again. And we were able to get through it. Did we do the pattern? Great. No, we didn't. But did she leave me? No, she didn't. She never left me once. And that was because we uh, installed these things ahead of time to make sure, because if she would have left me, we would have gotten possibly no points. If she, you know, in the International Liberty Horse Association, if a horse disconnects from you three times, you, uh, you will be DQ'd. So, uh, so it's important to get them to not leave you in the first place, right? Okay. So the truth behind motivation, uh, the ABCs of behavior, let me know, actually, uh, does it, everything that I'm saying so far, is that making sense to you? Uh, write in the comments, makes sense. If it's making some sense to you, if that's helping you, helping you to uh, 
you know, understand a little bit more about using bridge cues, using them consistently, how that can change your relationship with your horse and help your horse to learn a lot faster. Uh, let me know in the comments if you would, please. But uh, the truth behind, good, Rose, yes, good. I'm glad that's helping you. The, the truth behind motivation here, uh, ABCs of behavior modification. Uh, good, Carrie says it makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, ABCs is nothing new. We use it with humans. We use it with animals, behavior uh, modification. Uh, good, very helpful. Uh, we, we use it anytime that we're using behavior modification, we're going to use antecedent behavior consequence. So Kathy says, makes sense. Uh, I also think facial expressions or body language can be used too. Absolutely. Uh, your horse starts to learn those uh, consistencies in your body language that uh, that you're saying. So if, you, if I make myself bigger and I'm telling a horse to stop and I say no at the same time and the sternness on my face to, and, and my vocal, my vocal says no versus good, right? So there is something to be said about that. Yeah. So uh, anyway, going back to the ABCs, antecedent behavior consequence. So antecedent uh, is what happens before your horse actually does what it does. So uh, if you are asking your horse to, to go out in a liberty circle, if you're asking your horse to pivot his hindquarters, maybe you're not at liberty circles yet, right? Uh, you know, you haven't gotten that far. A lot of you, this is new for you to do liberty. This is brand new and you don't know where to start, right? And I can help you with that. I can help you with how to start uh, liberty and get you started. But uh, your antecedent is your cue. Your behavior is the behavior that the horse gives you, whether it's a desired behavior or undesired behavior. And the consequence is the reinforcer that happens after that. So whether it's a desirable reinforcer or an undesirable reinforcer, uh, it is a reinforcer. So that's your consequence. And so that's really what that is. Uh, so the truth, though, behind motivation goes deeper and that is into operant conditioning. I'm just going to get just a tad bit sciencey for a minute here. Maybe you have seen, oh my goodness, my minuses disappeared uh, under here. Maybe you have seen, I don't know what happened to the, the formatting of the slide. So my apologies, but this is supposed to say R plus, R minus, P plus, P minus. Maybe you've seen this quadrant before. I don't know. Uh, but what this means are these at the top are the consequences that will help you increase behaviors, okay? Desirable behaviors, right? Uh, they preferred, but they can increase any behavior. If your horse runs off on you because there's some grain over in the corner or there's some hay in the corner and they're eating hay, that's still a positive reinforcer and, uh, and a negative reinforcer at the same time. They ran off on you, so they got a release of pressure, which is the R minus, right? And then the R plus is the fact that they are getting a food reward over there. So there's, there's a positive reinforcer. So that's going to increase that behavior, increase the chances that they're going to give you that behavior again, that they're going to run off on you. And that's called rehearsal. And we want to avoid the rehearsal of behavior, of that kind of behavior. Uh, rehearsal of good desirable behavior can be really good, but rehearsal of undesired behavior is not so good when you're trying to uh, accomplish something with your horse. So uh, our plus is your positive reinforcer, our minus is your negative reinforcer, and that increases behavior. Consequences that can decrease behavior uh, can be um, your, so we, Word P is, stands for punishment. I like to use the word correction. I think most people can understand that a little better versus punishment. Punishment, uh, you know, we, we, we correct our children, um, you know, maybe set boundaries with our children. Same with horses. We're going to set some boundaries. And, and here's how we might use those. So for uh, removing a desirable stimulus, a desirable, uh, something desirable to the horse, then that is going to be a, a um, negative punishment. That means we remove something desirable. Uh, 
so that might be grain if your horse is pawing, maybe it might be a, a, a pal that they're hanging with and they're, uh, they like that, that, that other buddy, but they're just being mean to them and they're kicking at them or something. And so we remove them. That is a consequence, right? That, that we are delivering for that. The uh, positive reinforcers. So these are mathematical. It's addition or subtraction. We are taking away or we are adding to something. So the uh, positive punishment aspect is the correction that we might add. We might deliver a backup if our horse steps into our space. Uh, if if the horse, so in the example of, let's just say, Magica and Dalton are together, Magica bites at Dalton and she keeps biting at him and kicking at him. And, and I've already said no, and that's not working. I'm going to take her and I'm going to go move her feet. Quite simply, I'm going to let her know that that was the wrong answer. So I have delivered a, an undesirable consequence to her for that behavior. And that, uh, that in itself is a positive punisher, right? So that's how we might use uh, uh, this quadrant in our horse training. So keep that in mind as you're working your horses. So, so that's bridge cues in a nutshell, right? And, and Timing isn't just anything when it comes to delivering that bridge cue. It's uh, really everything. So there's a lot that goes into all of this. Uh, and, and if you need help with your timing, uh, you know, let's hop on a free call where I can share some insights on how I can help you uh, improve that timing and help you with your clarity and your communication, connection, motivation for your horse. Uh, you know, those are all things that I can help you with. And, and uh, I've helped dozens of horse owners and trainers who are struggling with the, you know, this very same stuff, right? That their communication isn't clear. I've helped people who want better relationships with their horses, they, they want to build that connection. They want to learn, um, you know, what to communicate with their horse, how to communicate with their horse and uh, when to communicate it with their horse, right? It's uh, how, when, and what, and, uh, and they just don't know, right? And so what I do is I don't just hand over the fish to you. I actually will teach you how to fish for yourself so that you can make those decisions uh, so that your investment that you make uh, gives you the lifetime of knowledge that you can use with every horse from now into the future. So that's really, really important. So I, I'm hoping all this makes sense. And, and I'm going to take a minute or two before uh, getting into the, the, the Q&A here. I'm going to let you ask any questions you have. I'm going to drop a link into the chat real quickly here so that uh, you know, for you, if you, you'd like to schedule a free call with me and, uh, you know, get clear about your next steps to finally achieving the relationship you want with your horse and, you know, without spending lots of hours, uh, doing this and continually getting frustrated, uh, you know, I, I'm going to set that, uh, send you a link here and just going to grab this real quick. And then if you, uh, have questions here. I'm just going to open it up, give you time here just real quick to think of your questions while I grab this link and just go ahead and book that call with me and I can really help you uh, refine that or give you ways to refine that communication with your horse and uh, help you to understand uh, maybe where your uh, blind spots are. And then I can go in and I can explain to you how I might be able to help you, or I'm sure that I'll be able to help you uh, and your horse get uh, a better relationship. So let me just see if anybody has any questions here. So I'm just opening that up real quick. Don't be afraid, ask me any questions, whether it's about getting started in Liberty, how to get started in Liberty, what's the best ways, just ask away. This is your chance. We got a couple of minutes on this call. Don't be afraid. Oh, I'm opening it up for that little Q&A. Post your questions in the chat. Okay. Well, I'm not seeing any questions and and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make one final call to action here maybe somebody will have a question oh rose has a question okay uh 
what type of correction should I use when he walks or plows forward? That's a great question. So I want you to think about what would be the opposite of going forward? Backing up, right? And so when a horse wants to, to move forward, they're, they're forward motion creatures that everything is going forward, right? So back up. And that's what I do. When a horse steps forward, I'm going to back them up. If they step over forward three steps, I'm going to back them up three steps. And if they keep doing it, here's, here's the key. If they keep stepping forward and they step forward one step and I back them up one step, after the third time that they keep doing it, the delivery of that gets a little more intense. I'm going to back them up with a little bit becoming a habit. Now it's becoming rehearsal. And if you keep walking forward, we're just going to keep backing up. So backing up is going to be the uh, answer to that. All right. Gracie says, you said you skipped some steps at Liberty. What were the steps you, you feel you skipped? Yeah, that's a great question. So one of the steps that I skipped was getting bend in my horse. So, uh, you know, I always knew that getting control of all five body parts was very, very important and, and even did some bending exercises with the lead rope, but I didn't create bend. Uh, that was one of the steps and, you know, and I did not create bend. And so therefore my horses didn't pay attention to me as well. And I also, uh, at that time didn't have enough motivation in there for my horses. This was prior to, uh, using bridge cues and positive reinforcement. And I was just using solely negative reinforcement to get my horses to stay with me at Liberty. And it wasn't enough. So uh, it really took a, an overall, uh, that overall, Overall program of really diving in and breaking it down and figuring out uh, not only mindfulness of the horse and what mattered to the horse we you know I had to deliver into that emotional bank account with my horse and and that uh, that was missing in that and and that also was uh, using bridge cues because that bridge cue, when it's conditioned to be associated with a negative reinforcer and a positive reinforcer is very, very powerful and very strong. So strong that, uh, that's all it takes is for the horse to hear that at some point. And they, they immediately, uh, the process that's going through their mind, the, uh, all these, you know, I don't know, they call them neurons or whatever it is, this, this, this whole positivity uh, feels for the horse, right? Or it goes through the horse's mind and, and, and it's just a warming thing for them. So uh, that's how important that is. But so that was uh, some of the steps definitely that I was missing. And then, you know, letting my frustration get to the best of me. So I, uh, you know, frustration starts where, where, you know, where your learning has ended. So if you're if you're not continuing your learning and your education journey into to understanding uh, what you need to do differently because what you're doing isn't working and I mean that's the definition of insanity right doing the same thing and expecting different results and, and so you have to go back to that drawing board and figure that out and if you're getting the same result go back and because that's where your frustration is starting. If you get frustrated with your horse that you're clearly not doing something right. And, and that's what it boils down to. So hopefully that, that helped you uh, a little bit, Gracie. So any other questions out there? All right, well, uh, I'm gonna do one final call to action here. Uh, and, and if you'd like to get some clarity uh, in your, you know, as far as your communication, see how I can help you with your motivation with your horse, your, you know, again, overall, your communication, your motivation, your connection, those are three non-negotiables, you know, go ahead, book a free call with me, it doesn't cost you anything, in fact, uh, put your credit card away, I'm not charging anything for you, there's nothing to, you know, nothing to be sold on that particular call, I, I mean, we might talk about ways that I might help you uh, and I'll deliver some free insights, uh, you know, to help you out with uh, you with your horse, you know, help you with some of those blind spots and then dive in a little bit about, you know, how I might be able to help you going into that future. But, uh, you know, there is no, uh, nothing to have to pay for on that call. Nothing that, you know, that it's, it's not a hard sell. 
I don't even know if you'd be a good fit for my program. Like when you call, right. That's not, I, I have, you know, very particular things that I'm looking for, for people in my program. Cause I want people who are going to be successful in Liberty. I want, uh, you know, success uh, stories for sure. So I want people who are really going to put those efforts in and not everybody uh, wants to do that. Some people uh, just want to practice with their horse, work with their horse, you know, one day a month. And that just simply isn't going to be enough. But uh, but anyway, I'm going to post that link one more time for you and <clears throat> and let you have a chance just to, to make sure that you've got it. I, I want to make sure that you have a chance to get your free call in with me. If you're interested, if you've not done a free call with me, uh, go ahead and uh, schedule that. Find a, um, find a, uh, yeah, that's uh, not working. It tried to tag somebody. Uh, find a, uh, <clears throat> whoa, it's doing it again. I don't know why. Uh, leave it to Facebook to be trying to tag somebody. Try to get off of it there because it keeps wanting to take someone there. No, it keeps wanting to take someone. Let's see if I can do it there. Okay. Uh, I got it. So uh, anyway, leave it to Facebook. <laughs> wanting to take somebody that I have no idea who it is uh, at this moment. But anyway, uh, with that, I am going to see you all later and uh, run for the night. So take care.